What's up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel for a continued devotional. Before we get into that, I want to stop and say thank you. Thank you guys so much for supporting me over on Patreon. Some of you have recently signed up after that last video and it's like just given me so much excitement and energy to be able to do what I'm doing. And then some of you have been supporting me really faithfully since June and July and August and I appreciate all of you very much. You doing that means that I'm not having to work as a wholesale director or as a youth minister at a church or some other job to help, you know, support our family. Paul's the primary supporter, but I also need to like contribute. I do have, you know, things like student loans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you supporting me means that I get to devote my full-time work to the stuff that I do here on YouTube for you guys. The, you know, the digital devotional magazine Continue, which is available as a gift over on Patreon, or my YouTube videos where I share devotionals, or my Bible reading plan, and the things that I know that the Lord's asked me to do. I really appreciate you guys supporting me in that. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into this devotional. The list of scriptures I'd like for you guys to look up and write out for your own benefit while the video is paused before I share the devotional are James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4, 1 Timothy 1 12, 2 Timothy 4 16, and Psalm 119 verses 27 through 32. So look those up. I recommend writing them out and do that while the video is paused and then come back and I'll share what I have for today's devotional. So today we're talking about beginner level faith. Everyone starts somewhere, you get saved, you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, and then you start building up your faith. You have faith to believe you're saved by grace through faith, but your faith is at a beginner level, and then your faith is strengthened and increased over time. That's why Colossians 2.6 is one of my main verses. It's where we get the whole word continue, which is the title of my devotional magazine, the title of these Friday devotionals, and really the like action word for what I do here on YouTube, it says, and now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as Lord, you must continue to follow him. And then verse seven of Colossians two says, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Roots growing down into Jesus, that means that you're being be, being made stronger and stronger and stronger. Your faith is developing this root system and you are unshakable and immovable in your faith. So how do you go from beginner level to intermediate level to expert level? Like how do you progress? How do you strengthen your faith? I want to read to you guys from James chapter one, verses two through four. Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete lacking nothing. So mature and complete lacking nothing. The testing of your faith produces endurance. So I want to talk to you guys about the testing of your faith and what that looks like. Some people think that, oh, I have cancer and God's testing my faith. No, the Bible actually says in the gospel of John that the thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus has come to give you life and life more abundantly. We do live in a fallen world where bad things happen to good people. If you're doing the fall read within a Bible reading plan and you've been reading through Genesis with us, you saw when Adam and Adam and Eve, they chose to like disobey God and sin entered into the world. And from that day forward, the world is a fallen place. Bad things happen to good people. And because of that, people can get cancer. Now, can your faith grow as you go through cancer? Yes, of course. Romans 8 talks about how we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That means that God didn't send cancer on you, but that God can use the cancer that takes place in life because, hello, we live in this fallen, dark, evil world where sin and death reign at this point. And God can take the things that we go through and our faith can be strengthened as we go through that, as we continue to believe in God and trust God and love God and say, I'm not giving up on my faith in God. Yes, your faith can be strengthened during that, but that doesn't mean that God sent it. It just means that God is using it because it happens. We're in a fallen world and that's the consequence of Adam and Eve's original sin. Anyway, with that being said, I wanna to talk to you guys about what it looks like to have your faith being tested. I remember my faith being tested in high school through small groups. You may be wondering, what in the world do you mean your faith was tested during small groups? I went to small groups on Sunday nights at my youth group. 
and we would have, I went to a Christian school and I loved God. I was like a very, if you want to say devout, I was like a in it to win it Christian kid. I wanted to know God. I wanted to be known by God. I wanted to read my Bible. I wasn't perfect at it, but I did want to read my Bible. And I just wanted to love God. I wanted to live my life for him. But I was in a small group with a group of people and they came from various backgrounds. Some of them had unsaved parents and that's not their fault. Some of them had, you know, they went to public school and I went to Christian school. And at Christian school, I was getting like a steady diet of the word of God of the Bible in Bible class and chapel twice a week. Some people, they were brand new Christians. They were baby Christians and they just hadn't like had much time to study the Bible. But my faith was tested because in these small groups, we would have discussions. They would talk about, you know, we'll just give a lightweight example. They would talk about sexual immorality and how the Bible tells us to abstain from that. Do not be involved in sexual immorality. Flee youthful yet lust. You should not be living with your boyfriend or girlfriend. And I remember some of these either unsaved and they were visiting with a friend or baby Christian friends, they would talk and they'd be like, yeah, but don't you wanna like make sure, like I don't wanna get divorced. My parents were divorced. So I wanna live with my boyfriend like to see if it's actually gonna work out between us because I don't wanna get married and then have kids and then get divorced. That is a deceptive and fearful tactic of the enemy to try to corner you into disobeying God's word and getting into sexual immorality and sin, which the Bible tells us not to get involved in. At the time, I didn't know all that. I just knew that somewhere in the Bible, it said we weren't supposed to be like, living in constant sexual sin. Like we weren't supposed to live with a boyfriend or girlfriend. And I was like, where is that in the Bible? And I began to search it out. My faith was tested. God's word was questioned. So God's word says, don't, don't be a part of like sexual immorality, have nothing to do with the fruitless or the worthless deeds of darkness. Don't have anything to do with it. I knew the Bible said that somewhere. I wasn't sure where. Then someone questions it, which is what the serpent did in Genesis to Eve. He said, has God said, and then Eve ended up sinning. That's a really, that's a tactic of the devil to get you into sin is to question if the Bible is really true to get you to kind of waffle on it. So people would bring up, but like, is it really important to do that? Because we live in a modern era and like, we know that like divorce is a risk. And if we want to avoid that risk, we could test it out by living with our boyfriend or girlfriend first and seeing if it's a good fit for our relationship. So then we can have kids someday. That was a little trick and I didn't understand it, but I let that testing of my faith, is my faith in God's word going to hold true or am I going to rely on my own human understanding? I had a choice. I had a fork in the road to make. Am I going to let my faith in God's word grow and deepen and strengthen? Or am I going to put my faith in human reasoning and logic and fear-based, like that kind of thing, you know? So I began to search out the word of God. I took the fork in the road. I chose, I believe God's word and I am going to strengthen my faith in God's word by understanding the big picture of God's word. I began to read, this is my Bible that I used in high school, that I used again this summer when we read through the New Testament. But I began to read and read and read and highlight. And I would write in the back. I don't know if you guys can see, there are notes. These are notes on scriptures that addressed the issues that my faith was being tested about as I had these discussions with unsaved peers or saved peers who were new Christians, or maybe they were saved, but they just hadn't been studying their Bible much. I'm so, so, so glad that I chose to let the testing of my faith be worked out in me to study God's word so that endurance could be developed in me. Endurance, you are gonna have, like I'm speaking to you right now, if you are a Christian in 2018, 2019, 2020, whenever you're watching this video, you are going to face this constantly. You're gonna hear people in the world say that what is wrong is actually right. And what is right is actually wrong. There's twisted thinking. It contradicts the Bible. You're gonna hear logical arguments. That's what Colossians 2.8 from my mission scripture talks about. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. If you let your faith in God's word be strengthened and you reject putting your faith in human reasoning and high sounding nonsense stuff that it sounds great. It sounds very like sophisticated. It's an elegant argument. It's, it makes sense. If you can resist that 
and that urge to believe the deceptive lie and tricks and tactics of the enemy, which says what is right is actually wrong and what is wrong is actually right. If you can skip that and if you can recognize when the word of God is being questioned, I have a stack of like three Bibles here. If you can get your spiritual discernment eyes on and begin to recognize that your faith, which is being tested during those times, it will grow stronger and stronger and stronger. If you will dive deep into God's word and study it and hide his word in your heart that you will not, that you might not sin against him. That's from Psalm 119. I'm very passionate about this. If you can, not tell. You can also be strengthened by the presence of Jesus in your life on a daily basis. 1 Timothy 1.12 and 2 Timothy 4.16. I encourage you guys, if you looked those up, to meditate on how Paul, he experienced strengthening by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, being in his presence, being with him. When Paul was feeling all alone, when he was about to share the gospel for one of the last times in his life, he talks about in Rome, he talks about in 2 Timothy 4.16 that everyone else had abandoned him, but the Lord stood by his stride and strengthened him to do God's will, to do God's purpose for his life. And that's such a cool, cool thing to be meditating on. Like, Jesus, the presence of the Lord is with me and it strengthens me. And the more I spend time with him, the stronger I am in him. So anyway, that's the devotional I had for you guys today. I hope that it really ministered to you and strengthened your faith. And if it did, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in another video very soon. All right, thanks for watching, bye.